Stalin section. From Trotsky to Stalin, from the, quote, Semite monster to the, quote, anti-Semitic monster. The theory of Stalin's anti-Semitism proves unsustainable in light of conceptual and historical reflection. Whatever the date may be for the emergence of that sickness, whether identified in 1948, 1945, or in 1879, the year of Stalin's conception and birth, the diagnosis proves not only baseless, but also quite offensive to Jews, who in great numbers until the last moment continued to pay tribute to their supposed executioner. How is the origin of this black legend explained then? Let's return to the years immediately following the October Revolution. On October 4th of 1919, the Volkische Beobachter, at that time not yet the official organ of the National Socialist Party, not yet founded, blames the Bolshevik horror on a, quote, Jewish terrorist horde and on circumcised Asians, and to that end stresses that Jewish blood also runs through Lenin's veins. Similar denunciations are also heard in Britain and in the West in general. With this in mind, it's understandable that, more so than Lenin, Trotsky is, quote, the principal Mephisto-like subject of the anti-Bolshevik manifestos. A leaflet of anti-communist propaganda handed out during the Soviet-Polish War of 1920 depicts him with anything but human-like features, with the Star of David around his neck, observing from on high a pile of bodies. Quote, Trotsky or Bronstein, that is, the Bolshevik Jew par excellence in 1919, is, in Goebbels' opinion, the figure that, quote, possibly has on his conscience the greatest number of crimes that a man has ever been responsible for, end quote. On the other hand, during the invasion of the Soviet Union, announced as a crusade for the salvation of European and Western civilization from Bolshevik barbarism, Asiatic and Jewish, we saw Hitler depict Stalin as a puppet of international Judaism, as a Jew, if not by blood, then at least in spirit. During the years in which anti-Semitism was widespread or found ample support in the West, the monster par excellence couldn't take on anything but Jewish features. The situation is different after the collapse of the Third Reich and the infamous revelation of the Final Solution. Today, the monster that's able to provoke the horror, or at least more so than any other, tends to be the anti-Semitic monster. However, despite its variations, its continued flaws are evident, and the depiction of the anti-Semitic Stalin is not much more convincing than that which painted Trotsky openly wearing the Star of David and happily contemplating his immense pile of victims. End section.